Oprah's TV special, Shame, Blame, and the Weight Loss Revolution, offers new hope for the future of weight loss treatment. It turns out, obesity is a disease. It's not our fault. And new GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, Wagovi, Monjaro, and Zepbound are the long-awaited solution to the obesity epidemic. There's only one tiny little problem. Nearly everything that Oprah presents in this glorified infomercial is a blatant lie. Because Oprah and her team of money-driven experts are behind a trillion-dollar agenda that could destroy America's health and economy. If you want to know the truth behind GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic and Wagovi, and why Oprah is the spokesperson pushing these drugs into mainstream acceptance, we need to start with her ties to the big weight loss company, Weight Watchers. In 2015, Weight Watchers stock and revenue were at all time lows. So Oprah bought her way onto the board of directors by purchasing 10% of the company. Of course, her celebrity status and endorsement immediately shot the value of Weight Watchers back up. And in the years between 2018 and 2021, Oprah cashed in on all-time highs, selling a quarter of her shares to make more than five times her original $43 million investment. In her latest TV special, which was aired on ABC and now can be streamed on Hulu, Oprah states that she's resigning from the Weight Watchers board this summer. She's also donating her remaining Weight Watchers shares to charity because she doesn't want to be perceived as having any conflicts of interest regarding GLP-1 medications or Weight Watchers. It's a little too late for that, don't you think? The truth is that Weight Watchers has been doing terribly in the last two years. The company's revenue has dropped even lower than when Oprah got her hands into it in 2015. And it appears that Oprah's jumping ship on Weight Watchers is a business decision rather than a conflict of interest. The company is tanking, she's getting out while she can, and she's on to the next money-making scheme because both Oprah and Weight Watchers are in bed with Big Pharma. The historically behavioral change company, Weight Watchers, changed their model last year and purchased an online medication dispensary called Sequence. They're now a drug dispensary because why lose money and business to Big Pharma when you can just partner with them instead? Oprah who's involved with Weight Watchers, just apologized for preaching personal accountability. She said, it's not personal accountability. We're supporting Ozempic because Ozempic is a better business model because you never go off of it. So while Oprah claims that she's unbiased because she no longer profits from the success of Weight Watchers, she probably does. At the very least, she's already milked it for $221 million. And I wouldn't be surprised to learn she probably owns stock in the big pharma companies whom she hosted on her show. So let's talk about those big pharma companies and the other experts that Oprah had on her special. The obesity doctors featured on Oprah's show claim that they have no conflicts of interest. These helpful doctors just want to destigmatize obesity and offer effective solutions. Like Dr. Winfield Scott Butch, the director of obesity medicine at the Cleveland Clinic, and Dr. Amanda Velazquez, the director of obesity medicine at Cedars Sinai. They're just harmless consultants to the pharmaceutical companies, which simply means these companies seek their expert opinion, right? Both of you are consultants to the drug companies. What does that mean? What that means is that they're looking for our expert opinion to be able to deliver high quality care to patients. Right. What it really means is these doctors are paid by the big pharmaceutical companies to promote their drugs. Novo Nordisk, who owns Wagovi and Ozempic, and Eli Lilly, who owns Manjaro and Zepbound, literally pay these doctors for their research. They pay them for their assistance to make these drugs mainstream and widely accepted. And they pay them to spread the drug company's agenda and message. These doctors are essentially white collar drug dealers. 
So while the companies say they had no influence over Oprah's TV special, come on now, they absolutely did. These companies have a history of manipulation. They have been infiltrating and influencing our public health policies and decisions for decades, giving more than $25 million to the obesity doctors who educate our physicians. The same physicians you seek for advice and guidance and treatment. And this $25 million investment in consultation fees? It's nothing because they're making billions of dollars off of Americans. More than 70% of Americans are now overweight. A third of them are obese, which makes America the largest target market for these drugs. And these companies also charge eight to nine times more money for their weight loss medications in the United States because our entire system is subsidized and corrupt. In a lot of other countries, the healthcare systems negotiate better drug prices. In the US, it's a free market, and the people in charge of our country are profiting from it. The US prescribing labels, approved by regulators, allow these drugs to be recommended to a group of people that includes more than 50% of Americans. That's about 170 million people. If just 10% of those people were to use GLP-1 drugs, that's 17 million people times $1,200 per month times 12 months per year equals $250 billion per year which is why Novo Nordisk stock is skyrocketing. And if you're wondering, where's all this money coming from? As sales grow, the Medicare and the insurance industries are pressured to pay for these overwhelmingly expensive drugs, which ultimately means the end result is that everybody's healthcare costs go up again. And don't forget that this $250 billion per year is for the rest of the unforeseeable future. Because the experts pushing these drugs also tell us that obesity is a chronic, lifelong disease. In fact, much of Oprah's TV special is hidden under the mask of pretending to reduce the stigma surrounding obesity. It's not your fault because obesity is a chronic disease. And never mind that hundreds of thousands of people have magically reversed this chronic disease by changing their dietary habits. Because the real solution to chronic disease is medication. But that's a blatant lie. I understand the allure of viewing obesity as a disease. I personally spent 15 years of my life and eight years of higher education trying to figure out why I had severe depression and then drug addiction. Which by the way, if you wanna learn more, be sure to check out this video linked in the description and at the end of this video. But at the end of all of it, you know what I learned? Whether or not depression or addiction or obesity are diseases literally makes no difference whatsoever when it comes to the solution. There's never been a drug in American history for a chronic condition that has lowered the rate of that chronic condition. Obesity, just like type two diabetes, high blood pressure, and other chronic metabolic dysfunctions are 100% reversible for a lot of people if they address and solve the underlying problem. But medications don't solve underlying problems. They simply treat and cover up the external symptoms. And obesity is an outward expression of an internal dysfunction. And that internal dysfunction is not an ozempic deficiency. The obesity epidemic didn't exist before big food companies launched their outright assault on the food environment we currently live in. It didn't exist before the nutritional guidelines started dictating our eating choices. It wasn't around before our current health policies determined how we should treat obesity and metabolic disease. Guidance from the American Heart Association, from the American Diabetes Association, now from the obesity industrial complex, saying that if you take these drugs, you're good. But that's a lie. So whether or not someone is obese because they're genetically prone to being overweight or because they make less than ideal food choices or because they overeat too often, 
the underlying solution to the obesity epidemic is still the same. If we were to change the current food environment we live in, guaranteed Americans would become healthier in less than a generation's time. But there's no money to be made in that. There's no money to be made from solving people's problems permanently. There's a lot of money to be made in providing solutions to your problems while still keeping the original money-making problems around. You want to lose weight without changing anything while still eating the addictive junk food that big companies make billions of dollars from selling? Just pay us to take this drug for the rest of your life. And don't worry about the side effects or complications. We can treat those with more medications. Because yeah, there's plenty of complications from taking these medications, and they aren't as safe as Oprah and her team of grifters make them out to be. Dr. Velazquez, one of Big Pharma's paid experts, tells us the side effects have been overhyped claiming a comprehensive study shows that only 17% of people who go on the medications actually have to stop. The real data shows that 78% of people stop taking the medications within a year. For some, they're too expensive. For others, they can't get access to them. For many people, the side effects are horrendous. From stomach paralysis to constant nausea and vomiting, to severe muscle loss that resembles starvation. Uh, in our clinic, we often see about 40 to 50% of the amount of weight that is lost is coming from muscle. There's even reports coming out linking these drugs to suicidal ideation and cognitive impairments. This might not be so bad, right? If you just wanna use it to jumpstart your weight loss or get some quick results. Perhaps you could suffer through some temporary discomfort for a short time, right? Not exactly. A lot of these side effects remain even after people stop taking the medication. And the drug makers and the doctors being paid to push these medications openly state these drugs are intended for lifetime use. Do you have to be on it for the rest of your life? Yeah, the data would support that. I mean, we have good trials showing that when these patients stop the medication, the disease comes back. If you stop taking it, the disease comes back. The disease doesn't come back. Something can't come back if it never went away. The medications just hid the symptoms for a little while. They didn't get rid of anything. And the reason these drugs are meant for lifetime use is because when you stop taking them, you regain all of the weight. Most people actually gain more weight back and end up heavier than they were before they started the drugs. I would expect that those people are going to be insulin resistant to some degree. They're going to struggle with high blood pressure and they're going to be metabolically in a much worse place after using the injections than before. So the second state of your health is worse than the first because you've been injecting a hormone-like substance into your body. And when you do this, your body stops making as much of these hormones naturally. In nature, in a normal human being, this GLP-1, it's supposed to be working in the gut. It's not normally a hormone. Increasing levels in people to a very high level, we're not reproducing normal physiology. We're perturbing the system in a, quite a dramatic way. All of this means that GLP-1 medications are really no different than any other crash diet Oprah has done in the past or the fad weight loss products she's pushed and profited from for decades. She regained all of that weight after drinking her Optifast liquid diet in the 80s. She regained all of her weight when she stopped counting points and starving herself on Weight Watchers. And she'll regain all of the weight back when she stops taking her GLP-1 medication. But at least she'll make a lot of money off of it in the meantime. Because none of Oprah's money-driven, false hope solutions to weight loss are the real answer to obesity. I understand that this topic has the potential to be controversial. But try and put your personal feelings regarding Oprah and these obesity experts to the side for just a minute and consider the facts. 
Oprah and her team of drug pushers are absolutely biased in their promotion of these medications. They're making billions of dollars off the mainstream acceptance of these drugs. But medications don't cure diseases. They never have. And these medications have all the right potential to leave people in a far worse state than they are right now. So whether you're overweight because of genetics or lifestyle habits or environment or because you've been doing all the same things that Oprah has been doing for 40 years, the solution is still the same. You have to address the underlying root cause. And you can learn more about how to do this by watching this video next. Oprah has made $221 million off of Weight Watchers, a weight loss program designed to keep people fat and just in the program, because that's what Weight Watchers is. 